respected directors and nodal officers from different samitis, coordinators from different training institutes, Dr. Shailesh Kumar Mishra, Director Extension, and Sri Sanjay Kelikar uh, from Ministry and dear friends. Good morning and welcome to STRY monthly webinar. As you are aware, we meet every month through this monthly webinar to discuss success stories created under STRY. This time, we have invited Sameti Nagaland and Sameti Karnataka Dharwad. First, I'll request Dr. Raju uh, to present the success story on organic farming. Good morning, everybody. Myself, Dr. Raju S.G., I'm the head of the Institute of Staff Training Unit, Agriculture University, Dharwad. I would like to present one success story of organic grower. His name is Prutunjaya Lingapa Nakshati. He is a small village that is colors from Kundgol Taluk of Darwa district. It is coming under the uh, nine zone, that is the transitional zone. He is having the 12 acres of land, but he is cultivating the both agriculture and agriculture crops. Mainly agriculture crops like maize, chili, fodder, and crops for his uh, livestock production. And also, he is growing some of the food crops like mango, sapota, guava, jackfruit, jambu, and some other uh, vegetable crops like gumsticks, uh, some of the commercial crops like uh, sandalwood and neem. And he is having some 12 acres of land. And his qualification is 10 plus 2, that is, uh, is studied up to PUC level. And he is having the area under the irrigation, it is only of the 6 acres of land. And uh, he is uh, diversified and he distributed his cultivation with respect to the food grains, horticulture crops, and also for the agroforestry. That is the food grains for uh, 6 acres and articulture crops for uh, 3 acres and uh, agroforestry for uh, 3 and uh, he is a skilled uh, client he has got uh, some uh, training under this uh, STRY and he is the basically organic lawyer and uh, he is having the adopted the following technology on his farm based on the skill he has obtained from the uh, training for the SK, STROI and uh, he has established one vermi compost unit. It is a capacity of 20, uh, 20 tons uh, per annum and uh, he has established a biodigester also. It is having the 1000 liters of capacity and he has established one uh, Jyamrutha unit also and he has entered the best decomposing unit. And uh, he has also established the organic uh, acid unit also. He is having the, he is for his own uh, 12 acres of land, he is producing some of the organic manures or the organic pesticide on his own. And also he is selling the, some of the organic products, biopesticides, and also the, some of the vermi compost to the other farmers also. And he has started the organic uh, production of this Ajospirillum, Hazobacter, Acidobacter to, to increase their fertility status because we are having the Organic Farming Institute in our agriculture university. He is getting the all these cultures and using for this uh, uh, agricultural production. And he is also getting the, some of the Trichoderma, Bacillus subtilis, Pseudomonas fluorescens and plant-based uh, pesticide also. Because the, these trichoderma, bacillus, and pseudomonas are the, the, are the bio agents, and using the, these bio agents for the seed treatment or the seedling treatment in order to avoid the uh, incidence of the diseases. He is also, yes, also using the, some of the bio based insecticides, some of the predators, parasite, and some of the entomopathogens, and also the pheromone traps they are getting from the Department of Agriculture. He is not uh, aware of the knowledge of before attending this training. Before that, he was not knowing the, all these uh, techniques. But after the STR training, he has uh, adopted all the agricultural 
all organic farming uh, things in this organic farm it is also having the very good uh, uh, recharging of uh, bore well facilities also and i used some of the techniques i will show in the some of these pictures so all these impact <laughs> of this uh, result is adopted through the some of the programs also is more concerning about the environment because using the organic method of cultivation and also using the bio based pesticides and also the uh, some of the bio agents for its uh, crop production and uh, is keeping the all the environments uh, pollution free he strongly supported organic farmers and also he has told to several uh, uh, farmers about the is cultivation there are so many vertical hardy horizontal expansion of this organic farming techniques in kundgol taluk are just into these neighboring villages also he is also he is also resource persons for the many of the harge this department of agriculture programs based on the, this organic production of uh, cultivation and he is also fetches the low income because he is producing all the basic uh, uh, including biomanures pesticides everything he producing on his own and using the uh, same thing to his uh, you know uh, farming and uh, this uh, cost of uh, cultivation has, has been reduced because he is not uh, using any of the uh, inorganic based pesticides or the uh, fertilizer for his uh, cultivation you can see uh, some of the jivamrutha production units on his farm this is the one is uh, jivamrutha production it is and jivamrutha is uh, what uh, is uh, storing uh, in the a tank it is having the thousand liters of capacity and uh, so he is having also some of the waste to decompose uh, decomposing thing also he has the, having the very good containers for his maintenance and so he is also is the fruit fly track is uh, some uh, uh, you know for his uh, uh, in the guava cultivation guava cultivation he has controlled many of the pests that is mainly for the profile he is also having the some of the very good to warming compost units i think uh, he is i already told in the beginning he is having the capacity of 20 tons per harvest i think uh, he is having the many of the conies and he is giving the production producing the warming compost on his own and also he is selling to the other uh, this thing this is having uh, some of the uh, what milching animals that is the dairy farming also he has developed on his own this is the hydroponics this is the one uh, example of maize cultivation in the hydroponic system that is the locally uh, prepared on his own because one hydroponics cost about uh, that is the 10 to 15 lakh but for his own farm he is getting from the bombay but he has spent some to one or two thousand rupees uh, this hydroponics uh, local method of uh, this uh, part of production he is also grown organically. I think it is having the, some of the uh, fruit setting is very low because uh, we know this organic, uh, this thing, uh, you have to standardize the soil of the uh, soil conditions because immediately applying for the any organic thing to the has a menu, you won't get some of the uh, what uh, expecting yields, but gradually it will increase us. I think he has used organic what warming compost, all those things uh, for this mango production. This is the mango picture. And also he is having this sandalwood cultivation. Nowadays in Karnataka, sandalwood cultivation is extensively growing in the farmer's field. Because uh, the sandalwood production, the Karnataka may be the stands first, but uh, it was growing only in the Mysore district. Nowadays it has been spread to the several districts of Karnataka, that to this organic uh, farmer is growing uh, sandalwood cultivation also. And he is having uh, some of the dumb uh, stick uh, plantations also, because nowadays it is a, one of the important vegetable crop for uh, but vegetable to getting the throat uh, the year, but is also some uh, drum stick cultivation and uh, organic farming. I think uh, I told you in the presentation slides itself. He has used some of the techniques to in order to recharge the borewell 
what is the uh, water table uh, improvement he has used, used some of the recharging techniques and he has enriched i mean bore well capacity has been increased he is also having the sheep rearing units because he is having some of the sheep cultivation also and the start bed cultivation and also open uh, open uh, method of uh, feeding he is having uh, some of the sheep rearing farm also and uh, he is the man that is behind uh, his name is uh, what i told mrutunjay ham akshati uh, he is the man uh, this is the organic growers and uh, he is having for is because anything the packing is very important nowadays everything you packing anything product we have to packing in the very uh, smart uh, this thing uh, then you will get the some of the publicity and also is the selling capacity will be increased it have, is also some of the prepared some of the posters on uh, uh, this thing and uh, uh, on this uh, is labeling uh, to the some of the things and is selling to the farmers this is all i want to share uh, about this uh, my organic grow here uh, that is the mutuje and shanti thank you one and all okay i am i am rempa molotha director samiti from uh, nagaland uh, most uh, respected uh, dr sangamesh angadi as official from uh, from minish then respected officials from the ministry of agriculture extension esteemed colleagues ladies and gentlemen present first of all i would like to greet you all uh, good morning good morning everyone uh nagaland samiti was established in 2011 uh registered under society cooperative society act yeah. then we have a good number of uh, qualified and efficient uh employees with uh, with us i have uh, two lady deputy project directors and two gentlemen deputy project directors and all are working very sincerely and efficiently actually then we have a very good building on on by our uh, samiti and we have a uh, one training hall and director we have a good director room then tpd rooms are also there then we have a uh, good chamber for accountant gam clerk and we have a uh, computer program operator that's one ict chamber ngba and kcc one so we have one training hall and the capacity is about we can negotiate 30 30 participants and we have of two numbers of case house that again with the capacity of a uh, 20 and, and if we want uh we since samiti is also under agriculture department we have another one farmers hostel which can accommodate 30 30 person and sorry to say that we don't have any vehicles attached to samiti and we have other facilities we have kitchen cam dining hall then sir uh we have been implementing this uh, stry program since uh, 2018 19 and so far we have, so far we have enrolled 16 members starting from 2016 17 and but 46 persons have passed out during this 20, 2020 we have conducted a training offline and online due to covid-19 pandemic most of the trainings were conducted online so online we have conducted 21 numbers and off campus online we have conducted three so far we have trained 600 training program we have covered uh, different topics which are need based for the need based for the particular areas so we have covered agriculture extension management post harvest technology human resource development information technology agriculture marketing and others 
And during 2021-22, we have conducted 12, 12 trainings of two offline and 10 online. So as of now, till now, committee Natalin is uh, performing well and our officers, our officers, our ATMA members are also, uh, they are also doing their job sincerely and efficiently and especially for this uh, STRY program. STRY program, actually, Samiti, we are only managing the programs and these uh, trainings are conducted by the different training institutes covering all the districts of Nagaland. So uh, today, such a stories will be uh, presented by KVK Tuinsang and Atma Mokok Chung. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, everybody. Respected senior officers from uh, Manage, uh, officers from Samiti and KVK across the country. Um, Atma Mokok Chung is really grateful to for being able to do this presentation. Thank you, um, the program organizers, for giving us this platform to, you know, uh, present some of our experience that we have made so far under STRY program. Um, to have a better network connectivity uh, throughout the presentation, uh, would you kindly excuse me to uh, turn off my video so that the presentation can go around smoothly? Um, okay, um, back to the land, finding ways to self-employment is a story of a young unemployed youth from Mokshung district under Nagaland. Um, I will just take some time to slowly uh, turn around the slide so that everybody uh, can see the slide. Uh, we're going to the second slide. Uh, I hope it's visible to everyone. Way back in 2019, in the month of August, the Atma Motion had conducted a, a skill training for rural youth program uh, on the topic production, post harvest management, and marketing of vegetables. So, this young chap from uh, Motion District, Mr. Muatam Sir, he had an opportunity to, you know, uh, participate in this training program conducted under Atma Motion um, with the hopes of seeking a job in the government sector all gone, Muatam had slowly, you know, uh, begun to consider going back to his farming as a livelihood activity. Here, during this training program, we had uh, thought on various aspects on cultivation practices of curry and rabi crops, uh, as well as uh, post-harvest management of such crops and uh, covering marketing of vegetables as well. Mwatamsi had the privilege of attending this uh, training program and uh, on being trained on being trained by Atma Mokshong, uh, this Mr. Mwatamsi along with five of his fellow friends had uh, jointly created a farming group which is known as the Healthy Harvest Group. Uh, he had joined with some of his five of his uh, like-minded unemployed fellow friends from his same village to form this group. So uh, to start with their uh, farming activity, they had, you know, uh, decided on making use of one of the members plot of land uh, to set their farm. So uh, current, uh, they started the cultivation by making use of initially maize and then uh, uh, some uh, chili as well as some broccoli as well as uh, some cabbages as well. Now, after the initial process, they had also approached Atma Mokchung to train them on vermicomposting and some uh, systematic crop planning. So after providing the needed uh, guidance by Atma Mokchung, they had initially started with common maize cultivation, uh, along with some sweet corn varieties during the uh, curry season of 2020. They further added uh, papaya to cultivate red lady and uh, sapna varieties into their farm. Later on, broccoli, cabbage, and Chinese cabbage were also cultivated uh, during the uh, rabi season of 2020. Some of the practices followed by Muatamsa after attending the training program include uh, prior to the STRY program or the STRY training he attended, uh, 
although he had a fam farming family background, he had no clear vision or plan on what type of farming he would want to take up. Uh, also, he had very little knowledge on the potentials of vegetable farming. Um, there was a constraint of technical knowledge and uh, available resources to start a commercial uh, farm as well. So, um, after being taught on the advantages of group farming, he and his friends formed the Healthy Harvest Group and decided to farm together, pulling each other's resources and knowledge. Um, so this group had started following group farming abroad because uh, one man army cannot go around uh, doing a commercial cultivation of vegetables. So they had decided, uh, considering the lessons that uh, Muatamse had learned from the training, he had uh, decided and approached these uh, young friends to have a uh, group farming. Now, at the same time, he had also learned that integrating high value crops uh, could also enhance his income from the SCRY training. So he had encouraged his group and started cultivating high value crops such as uh, papaya, then uh, with special preference to sweet corn, then broccoli, Chinese cabbage, and okra, which are also high value income earning crops. Now, uh, con along with that, he had also followed some improved farming practices that he had learned from the STRY program, such as uh, plastic mulching uh, in his uh, farm, as well as uh, maintenance of proper seedling nursery to ensure healthy and disease free vegetable uh, seedlings production. We had also taught them about uh, community support agriculture, where the community would come together to help uh, the farmers to, you know, uh, progress and go about uh, marketing their producers. So in that connection, Motum said approached the, the his village community, uh, who had also assisted the group to, you know, uh, sell the producers in and around the villages. Um, so considering and taking around all these uh, inputs and all these practices, they had generated a very good uh, income from the farm, uh, which is around uh, five lakhs approximately till date. They had just started farming from last year only, uh, last year Karif season and Rabi season. And so from the profit that they had earned from the uh, farm, they had now purchased a vehicle for transporting their produces from the farm to the market. So some of the impacts on uh, of their success uh, to other farmers or to other youth aspiring to follow uh, vegetable cultivation is that they had encouraged the, their fellow farmers to practice group farming and also group marketing for enhanced production with equitable inputs and profits. Um, this has also helped the, his own village to meet the demands of uh, vegetables within his village. So this group is now an example to many unemployed youth. They share the message that agriculture indeed will also help them to you know, uh, provide a self-sustainable livelihood uh, secu uh, securing income. So this is the session plan that we had uh, made and we had taught during the entire six days of STRY program way back in 2019. The session topics included vegetable production, wherein we had taught them on uh, the various aspects of importance of kharif and vegetable cultivation, scope of vegetable cultivation, as well as status of vegetable production in the state. Uh, we had also taught them on cultivation practices of kharif vegetable crops, including certain important crops such as okra, chili, tomato, and covering aspects on pest and disease management as well. Now, rabi cultivation, uh, cultivation of rabi vegetable crops were also taught. Uh, along with these, were all theoreticians uh, with PowerPoint presentation, and uh, where we had also taught them on broccoli, uh, Chinese cabbage, then beetroot, pea, onion, and garlic management practices, along with pest and disease management. Post harvest management of vegetables were also uh, taught to them. Uh, this had included uh, theoretical sessions with PowerPoint presentation as well as demonstration, hands-on demonstration to cover topics on um, uh, methods of cleaning, sorting, grading, transportation and cold storage systems, packaging and labeling. Then uh, we also had covered 
uh, topics on uh, processing of vegetables where we had demonstrated them on various value addition products such as pickles, ketchups and sauces from the vegetables they produce. Uh, marketing being a very important aspect when we talk about uh, production of vegetables, we wanted to include this topic as well. So here in marketing, we had taught, uh, taught them on some importance of uh, marketing, uh, some marketing policies that is available in the state. Also, we had stressed on the importance of marketing mix, where we had uh, highlighted on the importance of the four P's of marketing, which include uh, the product, where what to produce, at what price to produce, where to produce the place, as well as the promotion of such kind of produced products. Here we had also covered topics on group farming and group marketing approaches, its advantages. Uh, com as we all know, community support agriculture is a very important aspect when we talk about production and marketing. So we had stressed on this aspect as well. Also, we wanted to cover topics on economics of cultivation, wherein the participants would have a thorough knowledge on how much they are investing and what is the profit that they are likely to make. So uh, props such as broccoli, garlic, and okra were covered for economics of cultivation. Now, uh, at the end of the training session, we had also taken the participants for a field trip to the State Agriculture Research Station as well as KVK Isamyong, uh, wherein they were also taught on the practical demonstrations that the, the research stations have made on such important vegetable crops. Uh, so these are some of the uh, trainers that were uh, invited to provide the training program. These are mostly from KVK. So um, uh, some specialists from KVK in, for the discipline of uh, horticulture, agronomy, plant protection, then we also have uh, officers from uh, district agriculture office uh, to cover entomology and plant pathology sections. Uh, we also wanted to include a very good progressive farmer uh, doing practicing vegetable crop cultivation. So we had uh, made use of our resources as well to train the rest of the participants. Uh, under, for marketing, we had invited a, a deputy director from agriculture to cover marketing topics. And also we had employed uh, a staff from Atma Mochung to cover value addition aspects as well. So with this uh, few uh, details, I would just want to uh, wind up my presentation. But before we do so, I'll just share with you some of the pictures that we have, the current uh, pictures that we have from Healthy Harvest Group. This is the picture that shows their field now. The first picture shows the broccoli cultivation. And these are all broccoli cultivations. Then this is their nursery plot, wherein they are uh, you know, uh, growing uh, broccoli seedlings in seedling trays here. We also have some maize and papaya plantation as well here. Uh, for maize, we, the, the Group makes use of HUP variety as well as maize uh, uh, sweet corn variety. Then for papaya, they are using uh, red lady and sapna varieties, which are doing very well in this region. These are also some Chinese cabbage varieties that they are growing right now during the rabi season. This is a below picture represents the broccoli cultivation. Um, they are making use of green magic variety. And also the last picture, the fourth picture that shows this okra cultivation where they had made use of plastic mulches to keep the moisture intact as well as to keep a check on the weeds that is growing in the farm. These are some harvested crops. And the last picture shows the members of the group. The third person from the left is Mr. Mwatam Sir, and the rest are his uh, fellow co-owners of the farm. These are some harvested maize uh, that they have harvested uh, from their farm. We also have some broccoli and chili harvested from their farm. And yeah, so that, uh, that is all about this healthy harvest group and the success behind this uh, group is that they had positively and in, attended the STRY training program, which has been a big impact in 
helping them to set up this farm. So uh, with that, I would like to wind up my presentation. The title of the program taken up was on the topic mushroom production techniques. It was conducted from 26 April to 1st May 2021 with 15 participants. These are the topics that we have covered under the session, like overview of mushroom cultivation, its uses, scope, and the benefits associated with the cultivation and different types of mushrooms and about the step-by-step -step technology of the cultivation. <clears throat> We've also covered uh, the topics like processing methods, uh, storing, how to grow, and the details of the construction of the storage structure, and then management and prevention of pests and diseases and the control methods, and most importantly, the method of the time and method of harvesting. And we have also covered the topics like marketing and space, which is very important <clears throat> as big, and the cost of cultivation and the preparation of different process products from the mushroom. And the expertise involved in this program were as displayed here, Dr. Bijus Kandipiswas, Dr. Kerimna, Mr. Younger, Mr. Longma. They are expertise in different areas like production, production marketing, etc. This is the successful youth who have taken up this. In the, um, yeah, the, the name is Mrs. Misula, age around 19, and she is matriculate. She is having a land holding of around 2.5 hectare, which is utilized uh, 1.5 acre for the body and the remaining one acre for she. <laughs> She attended this program and after attending this, she took interest and she started she started her business with this mushroom. And it was it came out very healthy and she made a profit of from the first first cultivation, she made a profit of around ten thousand. So from there her friends also got encouraged and she started Next one, please. She also started giving training to her friends, and they have now formed a group and started the enterprise. Major learnings that she has gained from this is the one training is that the importance of mushrooms and the school and the method of cultivation using the paddy straw, and the most important technique that she has gained from this training was regarding the preservation and processing. Like we have trained not only the cultivation. But we have also trained them on the preservation technique like pickling and how to make triflex, like this is the mushrooms. Regarding the spawning technique, which we have usually followed, it has changed after identifying this thing. And the construction, the construction of the storage house, it is also the technology was also upgraded after she has attended these lectures. And the trainees were not aware of the business products, so they were very much happy that not only the cultivation aspect, but they have also learned different process, uh, how to make different process products like pickles and dried flakes. After attending this program, five of the trainees have formed a group, like a self-help group, though the number is less, and they have started on commercial basis of, on mushroom production. Now. This, the youth involved under this success story, Ms. Nitula, after attending this, she also started giving trainings to the school dropouts and to the neighbors and almost they have started money after attending this training. And here, this is, she is one of the trainees that, that has been trained from the person under the success story. And we can see from here the mushrooms were coming out very healthy and in this in this place they have sold the mushrooms at the at the price of 200 rupees per kilo so after the training we have distributed <clears throat> these are some of the trainees that has been trained under this program good morning to all participants
first uh, i will congratulate dr chandrasekhar sir dg anesh and shailendra ji for organizing this uh, series of uh, webinars this is the sixth webinar and uh, i am very happy and i will congratulate all the participants that overwhelming uh, response more than 20 20 officers from different states have participated uh, this webinar that uh, we have 15 areas or sectors to be covered under this strai program i will request dr shailendra to kindly ask the presenters or states to present the sector in different way i mean to say this last time we have seen that there were some success story from mushroom cultivation today also we have seen the mushroom cultivation uh, practices so i think the other areas to be covered are shared we have 15 sectors if uh, every time you will share same thing it will not serve the purpose so please as the presenter are states to share the success story in the different sector that will serve for the other participants to know how they can get the benefit how can they will be benefit thank you very much sir for your observation and raising a very important point that we can combine success stories sector wise 